delighted to have um, Senator Shi Husani, a former uh, senator with the um, Eighth National Assembly, joining us here. And he's also a human rights activist. I mean, he's uh, visited <laughs> lots of prison during the pro-democracy protests during the military regime, and he knows what torture is all about. Let's have your views, um, distinguished Senator Sani, on the issues of torture and how the government can ensure that these holistic reforms that young people are asking for is achieved so as to remove that torture aspect and people are treated with human dignity whenever they find themselves in the hands of the police. Um, thank you for having me. Well, first of all, it is important that we try to understand the issue from a broader perspective. Uh, the protest is not about such piecemeal intervention and uh, reforms by the executive. It is a revolutionary event. Young people fed up with the system, fed up with order, fed up with government and the kind of governance we have in Nigeria, have decided upon themselves to take their future into their hands by trooping out to the street and challenging the political establishment, demanding a change. And, and people are wondering, should oh. this be a political issue or uh, uh, hold, they hold are on. still sticking to hold their on. point of calling for in, reforms in, of the police? In every country of the world, when you have people trooping to the street, there must be an issue that brought them out. In which, some which countries, the in some right countries it, is, it may be the increase in price of bread. In some countries, it may be one policeman torturing a single person, like Mohammed Bouazizi in Tunisia, and that led to the Arab Spring. What you are having here today, the, a section of the police, which is the SAS, has constituted itself into an oppressive force, operating out of order, out of law, unleashing terror and evil against innocent Nigerians. Now, Nigerians, particularly young people, have stood up and have woken up to their civic responsibility by challenging that order. Now, without that protest, without that objection, without this dissent and revolt, the federal government could not have thought of reforming the police or arresting those who are responsible for this torture or bringing them to book. For more than two decades, Nigerians have been hearing of police reform, police reform, police reform. All you have seen in the last 20 years is that police change their new uniform from the whole black and then <laughs> now blue. to a gray one and a blue one. That's all. So what you are seeing today is the greatest gift Nigeria will have for its 60th anniversary. And this is one of the most happiest moments in my life to see young people <laughs> in the street. And they should not stop. They should continue to protest until all their demands are met. Because the level of arrogance, of repression, the disconnect between the leaders and the led in Nigeria has reached such a dangerous level that people thought that because they have won election, they are in power, so they have the power and authority to do what they want. Now these young people are telling those in the position of authority that you block our future, we block your roots. And that is the best way to <laughs> and do And I read your tweets on that yes. earlier on. But uh, there's a dimension that we're having. The protests are not taking so much of a strong effect in the northern part of the country. And uh, from the few protests that we've seen being organized, they actually are on insecurity or lack of power generation like we had in Niger State and all of that. Why do you think this is happening? Well, um, naturally, uh, from the north, the theme of the protest is predicated upon the very issues that concerns the region, which is insecurity. The banditry and kidnappings in the northeastern part, northwestern part of Nigeria and in insurgency in the northeast. But what some political elite in the north try to do is to justify the retainship of SARS. And the question I do ask is, if SARS is so relevant, is so essential, is so useful in the northern part of Nigeria, why has the killings, the kidnappings in Zamfara, in Kazana, in Kaduna, in Niger, in Sokoto, and the killings still going on in parts of Adamawa, uh, Borno State, and Yoba State, and people are still killing us in Plateau State, and Taraba State, and Benue State? So, 
some political elites, particularly the northern governors, try to create a perception by thinking that the protest against SARS is a southern affair and that the SARS has been so useful in the north. But coming from Kaduna, I know of many families today that have been struggling to sell their houses and farmland to pay ransom to kidnappers and bandits. SARS has never been of use to the people of northern Nigeria. So the protest in the north is about insecurity. But because it started late and it wasn't as organized as that, that, uh, uh, as that of SARS, now you can see that it becomes so impossible for it to trend. And what we are saying is that if the SARS was not a cause that was uh, organized or created within a regional prison, it's been a, a cause that is being pursued by young people against a state apparatus that has constituted itself into a force of evil. And it has no regional or religious or sectional inclination. But it tried to show from the part of the North that insecurity, that the North faces insecurity, but it's not only the North that is facing insecurity. Okay, and, and this brings me to the issues that we all have been facing and the call for state police. I remember covering you in the 8th Senate uh, where the issue of state police was brought forward. And then we still had what looked like a Northern caucus actually disagreeing with the fact that state police should be brought in because there were fears that the emirs may misuse them like they misused them during the colonial period. So in this instance, the state governors may actually misuse them allegedly like it happened in the past. Why did the National Assembly not work to ensure that the call for this state police, especially as championed by Deputy Senate President Ike Kurimadu of the then 8th Senate, uh, you know, did not see the day of the, uh, the, the light of the day? Well, um, in that case, uh, Ekuremadu has been the most uh, vocal champion of state police. And uh, the legislators from the north disagreed with him based on historical experience of what, happened, what, what has happened in northern Nigeria in the past. When the police force was under the control of the emirs, that it, ha that it was used to repress and oppress people until it becomes a federal agency. Now the fear, which of course I share with them, that until and unless we have a clear regulation that will curtail state governors misusing or abusing their powers and using state police to pursue enemies to kill people and to entrench themselves and force themselves on people, I think we should have it. But now, look at how the state governors handle the state electoral commission. Almost all the seats that are contested in electoral <laughs> commission, state electoral commission, goes to the party of the governor. Now you can imagine such kind of people having control of the police force. So, but we can have a regional security arrangement, like the Amote Kundad has just uh, okay. been on the in the southwest. Okay. So we need some level of control with locals having the opportunity, the weaponry, the training to be able to tackle security challenges within their own domain. All right. Now, uh, uh, Senator, what do you think the federal government should do at the moment to ensure that, you know, the end SARS protesters are off the streets? Because that seems to be the music from the government. Oshibajo addressed them through Twitter yesterday. Uh, Senate President Ahmad Lawan actually has been saying that since most of their demands are being made, they should go off the streets, and that is the music. They quickly want to get these kids off the streets. Like you can see, ASU is being called for renegotiation and all of that. Um, I have listened to the demands of uh, the call of the Vice President and also I have listened to the call of the Senate President. But my own call is that they should not stop the protest. They should continue. In fact, more people need to be on the street so that this protest can have a very strong impact. What I know very well is that if President Muhammadu Buhari was not the President, you will see him among these protesters. I know it very well. Now he's a president. And you're very sure of that. I am very sure of that, that Buhari, if he was not the president, he will be among these protesters. So the protest should be national, should be massive, 
all young people who are sitting at home supposed to join their colleagues and make sure that this protest is not simply about SARS. The idea of we have many people who are unemployed, there is so much poverty in Lass, so much neglect, so much injustices. If not protest, they have tried patience, it has not worked. They have tried prayers, it has not worked. So uh, uh, protest right. is what we will only work. We have a few yes. minutes remaining. Yes. Are you for NSAS or Reform SAS? Just very quickly. Oh, in capital letters, NSAS. All right. Yes, Thanks so much. That is right. <laughs> yes. So